Welcome to Scale Model Basics. I'm Tim Kidwell. Let's talk about five things that you want to avoid with using clear plastic parts out of your model kits. Let's start with how clear plastic parts are packaged in model kits. Right here, I've got a little pile of clear plastic parts. Move this off to the side for a second. You will find in most of today's kits that plastic parts are bagged separately from all of the other parts. Kind of like what this uh, windshield and rear window are in this bag here out of a Revell kit, or this sprue here out of a Tamiya kit where this is all clear plastic parts, or you might even find them like this out of a Bandai X-Wing where you have a number of multicolored parts and then you'll have clear plastic parts up here. So the reason why they bag these parts separately is because they wanna give you the best possible chances of having a nice crystal clear, jewel-like clear part to put into your model. They, and probably you, don't want these parts scratched before they're installed into the model. If you do want your parts scratched, that is your personal choice and obviously the kind of model that you're building. In any case, if you should find that one of the parts has come off of the parts tree, or let's say you're working on a model and you've taken a couple of parts off of your clear parts tree and for whatever reason you have to go ahead and pack that model back up into the box, do not put those loose clear plastic parts back in the bag with the rest of these other clear plastic parts. Why? Well, there are two reasons. One, those parts rattling around in that bag could possibly scratch the other parts that are on the sprue or two, they themselves could get scratched by the sprue or the other parts by rattling around in the bag. Neither of those outcomes is something that you're looking for. So if this should happen, get yourself a small plastic bag and put that part, if it's a single part, just in there and then put that bag in with the rest of the parts. Or if you've got a couple of parts, what you can do is get a soft paper towel and fold those parts into the paper towel and then put the paper towel in the bag and then put that bag in the wrapper with the rest of those parts. That way everything's together, they're not rattling around and you aren't going to lose those parts and they're not gonna get damaged. One last thing, you might have older kits that have clear plastic parts that were packaged in those kits and they were never wrapped individually or maybe a more recent kit, but not a real recent kit where all of the parts are maybe packaged together in one bag and inside the bag, those clear plastic parts are rattling around. What you probably wanna do is open those kits up, just take a look and see where the, the clear plastic parts are. If they are loose in there, do what we just suggested and that is put them in their own separate bag. Um, if you find that, there, again, there might be a couple of clear parts that have come loose from the parts tree, again, wrap them in soft um, paper towel and then put them in a separate bag and close that off. And if you need to, even you might wanna, you might wanna take a marker and label the bag and say what's in there, just as a reminder that you don't wanna just reach in there and pull that paper towel out and there go your parts. Two, now regardless of what you may have heard, clear plastic parts in your model kit are more brittle than the other parts. Plasticizer that can be injected into styrene that will make it more flexible, well, it'll discolor styrene, so you don't wanna inject it into a clear plastic part. Regardless of the sciencey stuff behind it, the point being that if you snip your clear plastic part too close to the part while trying to remove it from the part's tree, you run the very real risk of causing a stress fracture or at least um, a mark, a stress mark in the plastic. And depending on where that is on that part, that could be in a visible portion of that part. 
and thus ruining the part for you. Uh, so let's go ahead and snip one, maybe a little bit too close. Now we can already see that trying to snip this with snips has caused a stress fracture that's moving up in there. Now I don't want to totally ruin this particular part because I'm using this as an example. But in a situation like this, even snipping far back here wouldn't do it. Now you can snip it back here. And now that thing is off of the tree. Um, even if you were to come in with snips here, this is, not, this is not something that you're going to want to do because as we've already demonstrated, it's causing a stress fracture. So what we would suggest you do instead is to use a pole saw and gently and carefully use it to remove that sprue gate. And you can see where I'd already snipped, that part came off. But then go ahead and use a file and clean that up. On clear parts that have smaller, finer sprue gates, you're going to run less of a risk of causing a stress fracture or a stress mark if you use snips to remove them from the sprue. However, the risk is still there because you don't know what you're going to run into when you actually go to apply the pressure. In the case of the snips, what you're actually doing is you're applying pressure and you're pinching through that, through that sprue gate. With the pull saw, what you're doing is you're actually creating a kerf and removing the material that is holding the part to the sprue. In that case, what you're doing is actually much gentler to the part and the plastic. If you like what you see here and want more, subscribe to Fine Scale Modeler Magazine. You'll get six issues a year crammed with how-to stories from some of the best modelers around the world. Go to finescale.com slash YouTube for a special offer for YouTube viewers like you. Three, now we're talking about how clear plastic can be more brittle than the other plastic in your model kit. Once you've removed it from the sprue and you're putting it onto your model, you have to be careful that you don't force that clear part to fit into the space that it is supposed to fit into. At best, you might cause a stress mark. At worst, what you might find, this was part of a canopy, this part split straight down the middle just by trying to be forced a little bit into a spot that was perhaps just a little bit too narrow. I'm gonna show you what it could look like, and I don't know how much it, this part is gonna be able to take, but with that canopy, it didn't take much and it, it went away. I was hardly putting any pressure on that at all, and it split. One of the things that you really want to do is be careful when pushing your parts or trying to get your parts, your clear parts, to fit into a specific area. Rather than force them, what you want to do is test fit, file, test fit, file, test fit, file, until it fits into the area where you want it to fit into. Four, as a rule of thumb, Unless you are trying to recreate some sort of specific effect, you do not clear coat. Whether it be flat, semi-gloss, or gloss, you do not clear coat your clear plastic parts. All you're gonna do is ask for trouble. If it's gloss on like say a car, it may look great over your paint, but what you're actually going to do is you're gonna cause a distortion on your windshield or the back window or across your um, headlight lenses or what have you. Uh, if it's a flat coat, well, you're just going to create an opaque barrier over those, over those clear parts. When I say you don't clear coat your clear plastic parts, what I'm saying is don't hit it with lacquer, enamel, or acrylic um, clears. If you are using Quick Shine or Pledge Floor Gloss, or if you still have Future, and you're dipping those parts, you can go ahead and do that because that sheets, it levels, and what it should do is just create an even glossier, more glass-like finish. And then you can go ahead and install that into your model. Which brings us to number five. 
When attaching your clear plastic parts to your model, there are a couple of adhesives that you're going to want to avoid. Plastic cement, and it doesn't matter if it's gel, if it's like a medium viscosity, or if it's extra thin, and super glue. You're gonna to wanna to avoid both of those. The former will craze the plastic parts. The latter will fog them. And let's show you what that looks like. So using plastic cement, we'll just go ahead and put this right along here. And you can see right away what it's doing there. And that is, you see it is crazing, it is dulling that clear glue. Now, I put it there just so you can see. If you run this along and it pools, and then suddenly that is in a place that you can see on your plastic model. And really, there's almost no way for you to use that and run that along a space where there's cl a clear part where it's not going to craze the glass and not be visible. With super glue, let's just go ahead and run a bit of super glue up underneath this. Obviously, this is a lot, and this is for demonstration purposes, but with the super glue, especially in an enclosed area, and you can see it happening right now, what it will do is it will start to fog your clear plastic part as it cures. So it's not so much melting the plastic like what the plastic cement does, but as it cures, it's, it's generating heat and then it's fogging that plastic. So you wanna avoid both of those. If you were using either plastic cement or super glue to attach a clear plastic part to your model, you're going to be judicious about the, how much you use and the placement. You're gonna try and put it in the most inconspicuous spots, which is fine, but the danger is this. Both of those, they run. The plastic cement, the thin cement, is going to, it, it's going to run via capillary action, and super glue has a tendency to move and spread as well. Thing is, is once you put it in and you attach it, and if there is any running, if, there is, if it moves at all and it gets into a space that is visible, well, now you've really caused yourself a problem on your model. And you can be as careful as careful can be, and this can happen. So the better option is to use something like Microscale, Micro Crystal Clear, it's specifically designed for use with models and clear plastic parts. You can use Elmer's white glue. Or a lot of car modelers, they like to use like Tamiya clear gloss or another clear gloss to flow in around those clear plastic parts because it dries clear. And it's not going to eat into your clear plastic and it's not going to cause it to fog or to craze. Clear parts are an integral part of many plastic scale models. And there's nothing that is going to ruin one of those models more than if you've got clear parts that are scratched, broken, crazed, fogged, or the like. So hopefully these five tips will help you avoid those problems.